Coach, always tough coming in on a tie. Kind of a weird thing to come in on a tie, right? Yep. But the defense and the offense both did some good things, or hopefully we're going to highlight some of that stuff today. The first thing is, I think the defense did an excellent job. We're just going to fast forward through this real quick. On the keeper game, that was something yes. that they were going to do, right? And I think yes. you guys did an excellent job making adjustments. So let's talk about some of those adjustments. First, I like what FA does here in terms of getting vertical, right. keeping him from attacking the edge, right? And I like that you guys get to cover too, because one of the things about running this um, these keepers is you get easy flat throws. But yes. in cover two, you have a player here, Kendall Fuller, in the flat that kind of takes it away right now. So talk about that adjustment and then why it's advantageous. Well, for the most thing, one of the things that we had to do and had to understand is keeping him contained in the pocket. All right, some of the adjustments that Jack and his staff talked about at halftime was making sure that if you feel pressure in your six technique, you feel pressure, right. fight the pressure and try to get as vertical as you can to force the ball out of the quarterback's hands. That right. way he doesn't have the run pass option. Right. The quicker he releases the ball, the quicker he decides to run, the quicker we can rally as a football Because that was a little bit of a wrinkle that they brought in, yes. right? They said, you know, usually they kind of have a free runner off the edge, yep. a defensive unblock, but they said, we're going to block the defensive end. So yep. that's something you guys had to kind of adjust to in game. Exactly. And so one of the things that we talked about is if you're a six technique, you feel pressure fight the pressure and get vertical right. nice job great adjustment by the defensive staff yeah and then also here we go we got guys in the flat just doing their job yep. being where they're supposed to be and that again takes away some of these throws you know a keeper kind of you know this coach kind of shakes out like this yes. right up and out right three level throw easy to match that up and you guys did an excellent job of that correct they did and one of the things that really happened because again as you said if you force the throw yeah okay look at this He's trying to dig across, get to formate, yeah. cross formation. If he sets his feet and has time, yeah. he has a big throw. Yeah, yeah, but he, you're right. Disrupting him, an excellent, just an excellent adjustment. Excellent people doing their jobs and really kind of befuddle the Giants' offense. And offensively, Coach, that last drive was pretty fantastic. This was, uh, again, something Taylor, you know, here you're kind of running this, um, I don't know, kind of a return route by both these guys. are not blocking, but that's the graphic I picked there. Could have maybe got the ball to Terry here, but make it a play, Coach. Mm -hmm. Scrambling out putting the ball down, and then obviously Curtis with the scramble rules is making an excellent right. play. And that's one of the things that, you know, our guys are very aware of with Taylor. Taylor yeah. can extend the play, give him, you know, and if you give him an opportunity, he'll find somebody. And the biggest thing here, Curtis knows that, hey, quarterback goes this direction, i got to work back towards that sideline. Right, and then one thing Fred Smoot pointed out to me is this DB's got bad eyes here, Coach. Yes. He thinks he's going to get a pick, and that allows yes. Curtis to kind of get out here yep. and make a play. But, Coach, I mean, we got to talk about the throw a little bit. I mean, for a guy who doesn't have the strongest arm in the world <laughs> – for him to be running this way, open up, get back with the ball, like, holy cow, coach, I don't know. Could you, you do that? <laughs> you know what's amazing is if you go back and you look from the time he was a sophomore in, in college at old DU, uh -huh. he did the same exact he did thing. Yeah. Yes, he does. I mean, that's a heck of a – I mean, look at that yeah. body position, right? Yes, like, that's, that's, a, that's elite stuff right there. It is. Great to see that kind of play from him. And, you know, what a, what a huge play on fourth and four to get it that was. done. It was a big yeah. play. And then this is maybe my favorite play of the whole season, right? And it's a great individual effort. You know the one I'm talking about. Yes. They get man coverage here by the Giants. They try to match up with your skill position, yep. guys. I think that's a dumb decision because you guys guys got some excellent skill position guys, especially with Jahan coming yes. back. Jahan's right down here on the bottom. Love the little hesitation move yep. versus outside coverage. Freezes the defender's feet. Gets into space, and then, yes. like, I don't care who you are. That's tough. I could do some stuff here with the ball, but Jahan's an elite player, and he's able to make, a, you know, make something really, really special happen. And, and what you did say, this is really about an individual effort. The biggest thing is we clear the middle out so we can let him work, all right? We run our receiver, Terry, right through the middle, mm -hmm. okay? And now what happens is he's got this whole area in here mm -hmm. to make his play, and that's exactly what he does. Right, absolutely. And then, Coach, I mean, I've been watching football for a long time. A spin move like that, that's – Pretty special, Coach. Yeah, that's a Houdini. <laughs> that's a Houdini move right get, there. He can get out of anything. Houdini. I mean, if this guy number 44 is probably having a rough day in meetings today, I'll tell you that. Oh, he did. But it's nice to have those types of skill position guys. And I know it comes in a tie, Coach, but great players make great plays. And here, let's take another look at this. Just catch, run, getting into space. And probably one of the really nice things about this, too, is look, again, this is late in the game. Yeah. Look at the protection. Yes, Coach. Yes. Look Give those the guys their props. That's a great pocket there. Allows him to kind of check front side. Get back to the read over the ball. Easy opportunity. Love that. Yeah. Coach, excited for the bye week, but some cool stuff to build off of moving into Giants round two. Most certainly. Most certainly. <laughs> Coach, obviously bye week this week, so I thought this was a good opportunity to go back and look at some things mm -hmm. that the offense has done really well, specifically in the Atlanta game. I thought there was some really fun stuff. And this first play is, uh, is B-Rob's touchdown, a uh, little swing pass off of a mesh concept. And the Atlanta Falcons are in quarters coverage. Mm -hmm. And why is mesh so good and what what is mesh and why is it right. good versus quarters well the biggest thing we talk about in, in running certain routes specific routes is they got to match what they're playing mm. here we're down here 
and we're in a two by two formation. We know yep. that there is a quote unquote mesh concept, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and overload the mesh concept in terms okay. of how we run it. So in this particular instance, we're gonna run it dragging two guys from our right to our left. The tight ends here at the bottom. Correct, and yep. we're gonna bring one receiver across. Yep. So what's gonna happen is we are basically attacking the three underneath guys. Right but we're gonna attack them with four guys, okay? Yes. So what'll happen is, as, as the concept unfolds, yep. okay, and the DBs go into their drop, they're playing four over three, uh -huh. okay? Yep. And because they're playing four over three, that means that those guys are gonna get a minimum 12 to 18 yards depth okay. by the time the ball's thrown. You're talking about the back line here, Correct, right? yep. the back line, because again, as you, as you pointed out, they're in quarters. Yep. So what's happening is by attacking the underneath coverage, mm -hmm. okay, the three guys, we get an opportunity to have them matched up on three different players, Yep. and we're gonna add a fourth to the mix, and that's B-Rob swinging out. Yeah. Okay, I and because of that, there is no answer for Brian, and he's gonna be left alone. Yeah, and so how do you get to this, Coach? Is this through film studies, this understand they like to run quarters in the red zone, or is this kind yes. of like, yes? Yes, through, through film study, you, you'll come out and you'll look and say, hey, you know, they're a quarters team, they're a half team, they're a man team, right. they're a pressure team. And based on that, that's how you game plan. You say, okay, yeah. we're going to anticipate this. Now, the problem is sometimes you may anticipate something right. and be wrong, so your route combinations have to have some sort of quote-unquote fail safe. Mm. Hey, we want to run this route just in case they're in quarters. Yeah. But if they're in man, we want to we want to have another route that works for well. Mesh is one of those. Right. Mesh can be good basically for any coverage because for the most part, because if you're playing cover two, yeah. you're still attacking the same three guys With, underneath. Yeah, mm -hmm. If they're in quarters, you're still attacking the same three guys underneath. If they're in cover three, yeah. okay, you're still attacking the same guys underneath. So the same mesh kind is, of core of the defense. Correct. So. The only problem with mesh, though, is it's not a, a route combination to design for chunk play. Right, right. Okay? So in this instance, down in the red zone, it's a good concept. Why? Because, again, it's going to attack what we think they're doing. Because, again, we felt that they would play quarters. Yep. We felt they would play cover two. And we felt they would play, they would play one man. Yeah. Mesh is good for all three. It's better versus quarters. Yeah. It's better versus one. Yeah. Okay, but it's not quite as good against two because you have the corners now on the outside. They're underneath. Correct. Yeah, there's more underneath defenders in cover Correct, two. and they're, they're flat. Right. So mm -hmm. they're staying to the flat, and they can react a little bit quicker. Here, what happens on this particular play, the quarter corner on the left side of their, de of their defense, yeah. he's got to respond because if that tight end runs a seven route. A corner he, route, yep. A corner route. He's got to play that route. Yep. Okay, so he's getting ready for that. He's not quite aware that B. Rob, as a swing player, yeah is in position to catch the ball with a lot of room between he and uh, B-Rob, yeah. there's going to be a high-impact collision. <laughs> high-impact collision for sure. And also one of the things I like how you're running mesh here, Coach, is how the tight end is inside releasing uh -huh. this underneath hook player to get him to condense his responsibility, right? Correct. He can't get wide on Terry. He can't get wide with B-Rob because Logan Thomas is attacking the inside shoulder there. Correct. And it creates this huge space down here at the bottom in addition to the vertical stem, which affects the corner. Right. And the thing about it, too, is... The, the, the three linebackers that are dropping are re responsible for two, three, two. Okay. In other words, whoever becomes number two, whoever becomes number three, and whoever becomes number two on the other side, right. that's who they have. And as you look at this example, right. okay, they're responsible for all right, the wide receiver coming underneath, right. the two tight ends that are working the middle. That's great. So yeah. what happens is B-Rob actually becomes the new number one down here, uh -huh. and on the vertical, he's the responsibility of the corner. I and gotcha. as I said... Look at the distance between the two of them. <laughs> it's a great decision by Taylor. He gets the ball to B-Rob in a hurry. B-Rob turns it up, and now it's a one-on-one -on -one collision. Yeah, and I think uh, we all know how this turns out, Coach. When a guy's 230, going up against a guy who's 185 pounds, that's yeah. a tough deal, right? It is a very <laughs> tough deal. That's a tough deal. So I love that play design. Obviously, mesh is something you guys love running. This is another one that's kind of game plan specific, short yardage situation. Yeah. And everyone sees the toss. Everyone sees the big play here. Uh, but there's a lot of nuance, I think, that went into this that made this play so effective. Yes. Well, the first is, you know, it's an unbalanced formation. We bring the, we bring the tackle over. We know that they're going to boss over and match that, which means they're going to be one less guy to our offensive left. Yeah, if you go to the end zone, I think you can see it pretty clean, right? Yeah, like see how they're all pushed over to the big yep. tight end over here? Like they're not counting for Bates as a tight end anymore. Right. He's now a tackle in their eyes. Correct. And the thing that helps us here is the willingness and the ability of our, of our wide receivers mm, to block. Right. Okay? So in this formation, you know, based on where, how they're aligned, we can go either direction. I mean, right yeah. now, what you would have loved is, see how they stemmed down? If we were going to our right, 
Yeah. That's got an opportunity to be an even bigger play. Why? Because they stemmed in. They thought we were going to go quarterback sneak. What they're doing right here is they're inviting you before they stem down, okay? They're inviting you to run to the run quarterback sneak to the right A gap. Yeah. But prior to snap, they're going to stem down. Interesting. And by stemming down, now if we try to run quarterback sneak, hey, we're going to run into a load. But yeah. because they did that, let's say we were running toss to our right. Or Look even at, like that jet you guys like to run, right? Correct. Look at the angle we have yeah. right now. We could seal that just like we seal this. In both these situations, because of their defensive alignment, yeah. This is really an easy conversion for us. Yeah, it's awesome. And then, like you said, and even going the other way, yes. great block by the receivers. Everyone, like no one understands, yep. uh, fans anyway, that big long runs are made by receivers. They're yes. not made by the offensive line. And then yeah. great job by Bates here. Yep. Being an athlete, getting out in space, and, uh, you know, 34 7 a tough day, coach. Yeah, he was. He really <laughs> was. You know, the tough thing on here, if you really think about this, if there was, had been any way Curtis could have wheeled this number 54, yeah. B-Rob has a chance to take this to the house. Yeah, like kind of build the wall there as yep. opposed to letting Vito. That's yep. a great point. Yeah, it's, it's the little details. You're always yep. looking for those inches, yep. right? Great play, cool opportunity there. And Very this, good design. And then this one is another one, a great design play, you know, kind of sneaky. It's in the red zone again. They come out with a different coverage, right? We, you know, we talked about they like to play quarters in the red zone, cover three here. Mm -hmm. And the play action pass, the corner route to Bates, Love the setup. Love how it kind of all comes together here. Well, for the most part, again, they're playing cover three for the most part because they want eight in the box. Mm -hmm, okay, right. They want to try and stop the run. We've done a good job. We've ran the ball all day, yeah. run it very well. Now we're in the second half. This is an opportunity, again, to come out and run the ball and be physical mm -hmm. and set the tone in Temple. We got down there because we ran the ball, ran the ball. Now we come out. Because of that, we get the cover three that we want, and we go out and we run play action. Yeah. Okay? And if you look at it, look how the linebackers are caught, okay? Yeah. The original line of scrimmage, okay, is the 20 uh, it's, it's the 16-yard line and they step downhill. Once yeah. you step downhill, you've now given the advantage to the route runners. Right. Okay, so now what happens is we get a clean release down here, okay, by Jahan. The corner's got to respect it, and as Jahan goes vertical, he pushes. Yep. Now there's no way he can react and come back underneath to make this play. Yeah. Well, I think also, like, you guys you guys pull an offensive lineman, which gets number 54 to step up. You bring the jet sweep across, which gets three to step up in 27. Right. So even though they're falling back in their coverage, you've, right. you've cultivated a window here, in addition to Correct. the receiver with an excellent release. Right, and the big thing that really helps, too, is just the fact that we, we run the jet, okay, Curtis swings into the flat. Mm -hmm. It now influences, all right, the nickel, who's now going to be the curl flat defender. Mm -hmm. And now, but he's got a bust, right? And he's going to try and get underneath the yeah. throw. There's no way he can get underneath the throw because he had to honor Curtis initially. Yeah. And I think this is also cool to point out. Like, this is stuff you guys do well. You guys run the football well. You guys run a lot of jets. And you see the dividend, the reward you get from that when the defense is playing like this. Right. And that's one of the things we have to understand as an organization, as a team, that our personality, who we are, is about being a physical running football team. Mm -hmm. Running the football creates an awful lot of opportunities for us. The one thing we've got to do is we've got to be good at it, be good with the play action, because, again, that freezes and holds just enough yeah. to create plays and opportunities like this. In bigger windows, absolutely. Coach, always enjoy talking to you. Learn so much every time. Thanks, Coach. Really appreciate it. All righty.